Lipari, the largest island of the Eolian archipelago, which is about 20 miles north of Sicily. We came here for another episode of Sailing 2. This special episode dedicated to Lipari will focus on everything you can see from the sea, but also on land. We'll talk to you about bays, about ports, but also about the town itself, all the beautiful things you can see in town, all the testimonies of a great history dating back to prehistoric times through the Roman all the way to the present day. Last but not least, we'll talk about all the delicious things you can eat on this island. So follow me and let's visit Lipari. In front of Lipari, the largest of the seven islands that make up the Eolian archipelago. Lipari is the largest, so it's about 40 square kilometers. It also has the largest population by far. 10,000 inhabitants during the winter, but five times as much during the summer. The coast of Sicily, the mainland, is over there, 18 miles in that direction, so about three hours of sailing and we departed from Porto Rosa. Porto Rosa is uh, one of the home bases of NSS Charter, the largest charter company in Italy, and also the one who made the boat available, this Lagoon 450 on which we are filming and also sleeping, and also our skippers, Giuseppe Di Giovanni and Simona Pasqua. Hi, Simona. Hi, Gabriele. And also our hostess, Carmen, to whom we have this great debt of gratitude because she feeds us during the day in excellent ways. So thank you, Carmen. Behind me, we have the town of Lipari. But before we move on to describe the island, uh, I want to invite you to click on the link in the description and load our Lipari notebook, where you can find uh, practical information such as prices of pontoons and piers, uh, and also uh, phone numbers in case you need them. Having said that, a few words about the town. What you see over there, that hill is called Il Castello, the castle in Italian. And on this side we have Marina Corta, the short marina. And on that side we have Marina Longa, the long marina, which is actually where we are staying. Uh, why don't we start by describing Marina Longa? Yes, okay. In Marina Longa we are going to find four floating pontoons. They've got rooms for about 50 boats, sizing ranging from 6 to 60 meters. After these pontoons, we are going to find the gas station in which you can do gas, of course, and also water in case you need it and you haven't spent the night at the pontoons. After that, there is an area that is called Pignataro, and in Pignataro you can find Porto Pignataro itself. They have got space for around 70 boats ranging from 6 to 45 meters and several floating pontoons. Two of them are the one of Eul Mare, the marina that is hosting us at the moment. And Eul Mare has got rooms for around 120 boats ranging from 6 to 30 meters. Okay. You mentioned the gas station. Uh, what about electricity, water, trash, usual? stuff what do we do all of this uh, you can have them uh, at the floating pontoons or at Pignataro itself at the harbour and uh, use the service uh, because for example for the trash you are not going to find any bins around town any longer so if you anchor and you have got uh, trash to throw then you have to walk outside town to find the bins so basically if you're at the pontoons you have electricity water trash Otherwise, you can still get water yes. over there. Okay, uh, Simona, what other options beside uh, Marina Lunga? We can anchor, and we can anchor one spot is right here behind us at the castle. It has an important depth because it goes from 15 to 30 meters and the bottom is rocks, so be careful over there. You usually see super yachts in this area. Right, because it could be very problematic, of course, if you snag your anchor and it's 20 meters, what are you going to do? You're going to lose the anchor. Yeah, 
Okay. Exactly. Uh, besides that, we have Marina Corta. Yeah, in Marina Corta, there is the entire area along the breakwater jetty that goes from one entrance to the other one of Marina Corta. And in front of the breakwater jetty, you can anchor. The depth goes from 15 to 20 meters, and the bottom is a mix of sand and rocks. But be careful because it is with terraces. Yes. Uh, those terraces are a typical feature of the Ionian Islands and they can be dangerous because it means that the bottom doesn't slope gradually but it goes in steps. So if you make the mistake of anchoring right on the edge of the terrace and you drag, uh, drag your anchor even a couple of meters, it goes over the edge and then you're floating out in the open sea. Yes. Right. So that's where you can uh, anchor. You cannot uh, moor inside Marina Corta. No, you cannot because one side is for the fisher boat and the other one is for the traffic boat. So the one that take passengers around the island during the day. Right, so only anchoring there. You mentioned a uh, mooring field. Yes, there is one. At the end of Marina Corta, there is another area that is called Portinente, and in there you have got a mooring field. Which is? For 20 boats, roughly, and it's right over there. Okay. Uh, what about the winds, uh, Simona? The winds here, uh, you are going to be exposed from all the easterly winds, so from northeast right to south. In that case, don't come at the pontoons, but if you want, a good option is going to be Porto Pignataro itself, because it shelters the harbour from all the winds. Which, of course, uh, is the case if you have a strong wind. Yes, right. as well. Which, in fact, doesn't happen very uh, off in the Ionian Islands, although the name comes from Eos, the god of the wind, you sure. were telling me, right? Okay, and also remember that Lipari is an island, so if you're not sheltered on this side and you don't want to go at the port of Pignataro, you can go on the other side of the island. So right now we're going to take you ashore and visit the town, but then we're going to see some very nice space on the other side of the island where you can spend the night if the wind is coming from south to northeast. Yeah, exactly. Having said that, shall we go visit the town? Yes, let's do it. Please come with us. We are now in Marina Corta, which you can see behind us. Uh, this is actually the rich part of the town historically. And this is where the houses of the most important people were, right? And so you can see that from the decorations and the fact that the buildings are more sophisticated compared to the buildings on the other side of the hill, which is Marina Lunga, Marina. the long marina. That's where the fishermen used to live, right? Yeah, correct. Right. Uh, what else to say about this part of town? Uh, lots of things actually, because uh, a part of the square that you just mentioned, there are lots of churches around here and uh, really go and see them, starting from San Giuseppe Church. Behind it, uh, there is a little one which is called San Bartolomeo Church. It's often closed, but at least go and see the square in front of it. It's really nice. And the third one is right here next to us, is Madonna, Madonna della Neve. Neve Church. Right. And Madonna della Neve means the Virgin of the Snow, which is actually rather funny because it never snows in Lipari. But what they told us was that this is actually a traditional name for the Virgin Mary in Sicily. Exactly, okay. in Palermo, yeah. So what about this church? Inside the church we can see a peculiar nativity scene. It's called, in fact, Presepe del Mare. And this nativity scene, rather than having the shepherds, it has the fishermen, the local fishermen that yeah. actually lives here yes. in this island. Yes, they base the statues on living people. And because it was not uh, created a long time ago, less than 10 years, you actually can go inside the church, look at, say, Peppineddu, go outside and look at the actual Peppineddu sitting on the dock. Yeah, correct. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. What else? A part of uh, the place is right here. Another peculiarity is the castle behind us. Right, I'll explain that. The first thing you have to know about the castle is that there is no castle. 
That's actually the traditional name for the fortified part of the town, the oldest part of Lipari. Now, if you go up there, you go through a medieval gate, through those massive walls which you see, which were built in the 1600s, there were already walls, but those were renovated and reinforced by Charles V. You go inside and you find yourself surrounded by testimonies of 4,000 years of history. Absolutely incredible. It goes from the stone huts uh, dating to 2300 BC to, say, the Cathedral of St. Bartholomew with the statue of the saint, which is renovated in the 1600s. So incredible. And inside uh, the church, well, there's one special thing you were telling me about. They discovered, not that long ago, because it was just in the late 70s, a cloister right attached to the cathedral. Yes, and after Simona told this, we actually went and visited it. It's absolutely amazing. It's a cloister dating to 1131, the same time when the monastery was built by Roger II, who was the Norman Duke of Hauteville and also the first king of Sicily. So amazing history and really a beautiful, beautiful cloister. And amazing the way they found it. You remember they told us. Right. Uh, what they said was that there was this guy, Luigi Pastore, walking around because it was all covered. And he sees his capital and that's the uh, late 1970s. Yes. yes. And he says, what is this doing here? Tells the authorities, they call in the archaeologists, they start digging and out comes the Norman cloister. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. So aside from the history, what would you oh, recommend in Lipari? Lots of other things, but one thing not to be missed are all the landscapes, all the views around the island. And we went yesterday and saw one. You yes. remember how beautiful? That was lovely. Uh, we took a van. Actually, it was uh, 40 years, I think. But yes. it takes eight people, so you can share. We went up on that hill where there is the geological observatory. Next to that, there is a terrace. And that is right in front of Volcano, which is an island which actually gives the name to all the volcanoes in the world. Yeah. Simona, why don't you describe the view as our viewers look at the scenes on video? The view is incredible, as you can see right now, and you can see the island, Volcano Island, the crater itself, and Vulcanello, which means little volcano. Right. There is a stretch of land that connects the two islands and creates two bays, one that overlooks west and one overlooks east, and they are called from the geographical position Westerly Bay and Easterly Bay, Baia di Ponente and Baia di Levante. So, we have talked about the history, we've talked about the views. Why don't we go see the town? Yes, let's go and see the Corso, which is nice. Come with us. So this is the famous Corso, the main street of Lipari, where yes. people come for walks. And yes, yes. Usually in the afternoon, it's always full of people. And in here you can find so many different shops from local artisan or local products, or even if you want to buy just something little, a little present for someone, here you can find prices for all yeah. pockets. And also the little alleys on the sides are very picturesque, I think. Yeah, have you seen? They are lovely, really nice. Listen, I was thinking, do you want to come with me to a pastry shop? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. So, Simona, what's the name of this place? We are in Suba. It's the most ancient patisserie here in Lipari. It opened in 1930. So almost 100 years. Yeah, okay. exactly. And what are we having? We are having two paste paradiso, please. Oh, paste paradiso. So that would be paradise pastry. Yes, it okay. is. Okay, and what's in here? Oh, it's an almond pastry with cedro inside. Cedro, so citron. Yeah, okay, pieces exactly. of citron. It's a very good one. This pastry, the grandfather of the owner, Francesco Suba, he won a prize in 1974 at Expo Milan. Well, I can see why, or I can taste why. <laughs> okay. It's really good. Yeah, 
very, very good. Absolutely recommended. The other thing I really like is coffee granita with brioche in the morning. That's really typical of yeah. all the all in Yeah, But this is also delicious. Very, very good. Ottimo, signora. Grazie. <laughs>
The first bay is the Baia di Vinci. It uh, rides out of Lipari and is in front of Vulcano Island. Yes. The bottom in this bay is between 8 and 12 meters. Sand as well that one, sand to that one. So good holder as well. And as wind is protected from all the northerly one, so from northwest to northeast. Yes, so what is the next bay on your list? Next bay is Le Formiche, the ants. Le Formiche, we already talked about this bay last year on our video pilot direction on the Olean Island, but it's a fantastic bay, so it's always worth it a visit. Yes, and one thing you should know about this bay, you see this big rock in the middle. Now, whenever you see the name Formiche in Italy referred to an island, you have to be careful because it means little rocks. Now, in this case, the little rocks are submerged going from the big rock you see towards the coast. So either you know the bay, then you can go inside going very close to the coast. But the safest thing, especially at night, is to go around the, the rock yeah. and into the bay. What about wind bottom? The bottom is sandy and the depth goes from 8 to 12 meters. You need to anchor right close to the steep cliff, but don't worry, just drop the anchor and go backward. It's a wide bay, it's very scenery because we have got Vulcano Island, the natural arch, uh, the Faraglioni of Lipari, so very suggestive. And for the wind, you are protected from Misral, if it's not too strong, from North Northwest, better from north all the way to, to southeast. So we talked about uh, these uh, submerged rocks. Anything else we should be uh, concerned about? All the area of Lipari in this one and Vinci as well, you need to be careful about falling rocks. Yes, falling rocks. So uh, two things. First, uh, if you want to go to a beach, find out whether you're actually allowed to do that. Second, even if you are allowed, Go to the beach, but don't uh, stay right under the cliff because it can be dangerous. So, the next bay on your list? Next one is Valle Muria. Valle Muria. Valle Muria is a wide bay. The bottom in the area goes from 8 meters to 12, 14 meters. It's all sandy, so very good holder. Wide bay, it's a perfect spot also to come here and anchor at night. And it's sheltered from Misral, from northwest, if it's not too strong. Otherwise, all the way from north to southeast. Okay, any dangerous things you should be careful about? There is just one in this bay. There is a rock in the southeast corner of the bay. The rock is one meter and a half below the surface. It's in the nautical chart, but careful just about this. And the other thing, if you look at the beach, what you see is a hut made of natural materials and what looks like a medieval tower, an observatory next to it. That is a home of Attila, the hermit of Lipari. Can you talk to me a bit about uh, Attila? He's such an interesting person. Attila, it's a funny person, very funny one. He's been living there already almost 20 years. He's completely alone in the winter time. The wind is so strong in that part of the island, you know, the prevailing wind is from west, so totally alone. But in the summer time, lots of boat goes there, lots of people know him. So he's the only hermit with a guest room in his house. So he's a hermit who likes people, who likes meeting people, especially if they bring a bottle of water or something else. Next bay. Next bay it's Cugnolungo. Yes. Uh, this bay goes, uh, is between two capes, uh, Punta Cugnolungo to the north and Calafico to the south. There is a little cozy beach in the southeast corner of the bay. The bottom uh, it goes between uh, 8 to 12 meters, sandy bottom, so you will think very good holder. Yes, that's true, but go in this bay just with light wind. Right. And one other thing, you look at the bay, it's very large, I'm going to go straight in the middle. Don't do that. Right in the middle, in between the two capes, you were saying there's this very large submerged rock one meter below the surface, so very, very dangerous. Stay on one side or the other side of the bay. 
Anything else we should add? Yes, the, the wind you are sheltered from northwest to southeast, there is no coverage for cell phone and no artificial light. Right, so very quiet, very nice place. Simona, I think we are finished with the western part, we already did the eastern part, I think it's time for dinner. <laughs> And we are invited at Filippino, a restaurant in uh, Lipari that we wanted to talk to you about. So why don't you come with us and see it? Let's go. What a lovely weekend. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It was very interesting because I had come to Lipari, you know, more than once uh, by boat. Mm -hmm. But, for example, I had never visited the castle. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, well, I saw it now. And also, I hadn't seen so many bays on the other side, more on this side. Because, you know, you're always in a hurry at the Olean Islands. It's true. Uh, you know, lots of people make this mistake because they always see the usual places and they miss a lot in here. Yeah, but also they want to visit everything and there's many things to see in the Olean Islands. But I think maybe it's best to do it in steps. You know, take three islands at a time, two, and focus on that. If you have a chance to come back, of course. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, we did lots of things. Yes, uh, and, and this was a great conclusion. Yes, the dinner was fantastic. How about the wine? I like the wine very much, and the chef said it's uh, made with this uh, grape, uh, Corinto Nero, and the name of the wine is Nero de Munti, which is Sicilian, of course. <laughs> Uh, and it's very good and he told me also that the French drink it also with fish, especially fish soups. So if the French do it, we can do it too. <laughs> okay, so, oh, here comes the chef. Buonasera, vi è piaciuto il piatto? Molto, we liked it very much. We have with us the chef, Lucio Bernardi, who prepared this dish and the name is uh, Trecine Orchidee delle Ole. Oh, Trecine Orchidee delle Ole. So, uh, uh, trecine is a small pasta, it's like tresses, that's why trecine, uh, which resemble orchids, although the flower is that of the caper. Uh, having said this, perché non ci dice la ricetta? Why don't you tell us the recipe? La ricetta è molto semplice, è una ricetta non cotta, è tipo un pesto, viene fatta con olio e chiesa vergine d'oliva, delle mandorle, qualche pinolo, dei pomodorini maturi, del basilico e della menta che sono assieme ai capperi gli ingredienti principali del piatto che gli danno quel tocco in più, quel profumo in più proprio mediterraneo. Viene completato il tutto mantecando la pasta assieme a questa salsa in padella per qualche minuto con, eh, con l'aggiunta di un buon eh, cucchiaio di caciocavallo stagionato siciliano oppure anche con un buon pecorino. Ottimo. So that's uh, trecine alle orchidee delle olie. Fantastic. Grazie. Grazie a voi. Ok, well, I think I can wrap it up now. I know what you're going to say, right. but I'll go ahead and say it. Why? Yeah, you want to. <laughs> okay, do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If this is the case, let us know. You know Gabriel cares about it. Uh, give us your like, leave a comment, and... Uh, you said everything. All I can say is that I'd like to see you on the next video. I'm Gabriel Poole. This is Simona Pasqua. This is SVN Network.